Welcome to Geek Buzz. I'm Nixie Pixel here to talk about nerdy stuff that tickles my neurotransmitters, like fixing Mass Effect 3 and anti prejudice pills. This episode is brought to you by Gamefly. My grandmother was the sweetest woman I've ever met. She would gladly welcome people into her home and force feed them corn casseroles with a side of matronly love. But when mentioning people of a different race, she would turn into a completely different person. She would go from my grandma, who chastised me for saying things that sucked, was bad, to a woman who would refer to Asians, Mexicans, and African Americans as horrible terms that I didn't even know existed. Thanks to the latest discovery from Oxford University, we may be able to help treat high blood pressure and racism at the same time. Recent research on the blood pressure pill propranolol found that people who took the pill scored far lower on a test designed to detect prejudice. While this sounds great, I mean, doesn't everyone want to get rid of racism? What's really scary is that we're discovering ways to alter the way we literally think. What's next? A drug that helps you trust your government put in our water supply? I asked what you guys thought about this new pill, and here's what you had to say. It might calm people down, but I think it's a matter of the heart and ultimately the better aspects of spirituality. Interesting how they're thinking about racism as a disease rather than just a twisted state of mind. Do the fans of a game get to decide how the game ends? That's a question Bioware has to struggle with after many fans were so outraged by the ending of Mass Effect 3 that they banded together in groups to demand that Bioware changes it. One fan-driven online petition called Retake Mass Effect has gone so far as to raise almost 70 grand on behalf of the Child's Play charity in an attempt to convince Bioware to consider creating DLC that affects the ending of the Mass Effect series in a more satisfying way. Bioware has indicated that they might not be completely opposed to the idea. The co-founder of Bioware, Ray Musica, released a statement yesterday the team are hard at work on a number of game content initiatives that will help answer the questions, providing more clarity for those seeking further closure to their journey. He goes on to say that the team is trying to maintain the right balance between the artistic integrity of the original story while addressing the fan feedback we've received. So basically it was a long paragraph about their indecision. Should a company like Bioware be obligated to provide an ending to stories they create to meet fans' desires? Or should they be allowed creative license to make a game in any way they see fit? How much gaming can you handle? Play all the Skyrim as well as 7,000 other new and classic titles on both consoles and handhelds. With plans starting at $15.95 a month, Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as you like, or until you get Carpal Tunnel. Once you're done blistering your thumbs on one game, just send it back and Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list. If you really can't stop button mashing in Soul Calibur, simply click Keep It on the Gamefly website and the game's yours at a discounted price. Gamefly will even mail you the case and manuals free of charge. Oh, and of course, Gamefly has no late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. And if you're a fan of Geek Buzz, I'm a fan of giving you a 15-day free trial when you go to www.gamefly.com slash geekbuzz. What's not to love? I love tech conventions. It's like a geek utopia. It's also fun to see what stunts companies pull and how crazy they set up their booths to try to get the word out about their latest products. At the South by Southwest Interactive Trade Show in Austin this year, ad agency BBHlabs.com may have taken this a little too far. They turned homeless people from the streets of Austin into walking 4G hotspots during the event. BBH paid each participant 20 bucks a day and allowed them to keep the donations hotspot users gave in order to use the 4G service, which was suggested to be about two bucks per 15 minutes. Reaction to this program has been generally incredibly negative, claiming that it was cruel, exploiting the homeless and their situation. But the participants themselves might have a different opinion. So if they're talking about what I'm going through, they need to come right here in front of the convention center where I stand and plug in. Let me get some of these lights lit up. And if that happened, I'll be happy. They can say whatever they want. They can say I'm being distorted. They can say that they're taking advantage, but they're not. I'm at work. I am working right now. So was BBH taking advantage of the homeless people to market a product, or were they doing a good thing by spreading awareness? 
Let me know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to give that llama some love and subscribe. Talk nerdy to you later.